is for the current week. Um, my wife and I um, put Shops Dental Clinics together in 1988 and um, I'm still a clinician there, the Shops Dental Clinic. Uh, I oversee the clinical aspect with Shops and my wife the administrative aspect of Shops. Um, so our story has been 30 years. Well, it was our vision. Um, I had always wanted to be in private practice. And so um, when I started off um, at Luth, I quickly realized that, you know, um, staying there, um, I wasn't really going to be satisfied um, professionally. So I let Luth and worked in private practice for a few years and um, set up, my wife and I would set up our own practice and this was where we started, here in our papa. In the beginning, we, uh, we were both dentists in the practice and we lived above the clinic. We had young children, you know, everything works out well because we do it together and we, kind of, we always talk about it, we talk about it at home, decide, make decisions all the time, you know, it, it just works well for us. Yeah. The building belonged to my, my husband's father, um, he, he built it, he lost his dad when he was about seven years old. There's a sentimental attachment to that building and that's where we got our first break from. Um, so our papa holds that uh, a place in our hearts. efforts that he made at the time um, didn't necessarily all pan out overnight but you know they were consistent um, they had you know very very high standards and they kept to those and those are things I remember very well that when they started off at the time in our papa you know the place was very clean speak and span just gives the impression that this was an organization that was starting you know, relatively modestly, but was definitely going to be able to refine an industry. I must emphasize that at that time, you didn't have the internet and, and all that. So you couldn't just go into the computer and say, hey, this is happening there. So they obviously had to invest a lot of money to keep pace with what was happening elsewhere in the world and ensure that their standards could, could meet that. I think many people traditionally have a fear of going to sit in a dentist chair. You know, and um, I remember when I was much younger, uh, my dentist at the time was a general, a major general in the army, very well known at the time. And um, I, I know before I went onto his chair, I'd even uh, do the sign of the cross to hope that, you know, I would go in and come out without any major issues. You know, I was really petrified of going into a dentist, dentist chair. Even in some of the most difficult surgeries that have been performed on me in this place. The results are always sterling. I find that every single place you've been to, all the different branches you've been to, what comes through in all of them is the fact that you can literally not see a speck of dirt or see anything out of place there. Now that, in my view, gives me a lot of comfort because it shows that the things that you don't see, okay, would naturally also be used in a similar manner with the things that you do see, which is that the um, standard of hygiene is top-notch. They've come a long way. 30 years in the life of an individual or an organization is by no means a small feat. They've certainly come a long way. They've succeeded very well, in my view, to radically, consistently transform the way the dental business is practiced in Nigeria. 
and they've shown to the outside world that it is possible to do these things, that you don't have to go abroad to go and get the best professional treatment. As a very, uh, I would say, very, very genuine person, very honest, very uh, dedicated. Many people in my community also, which I've directed them here, have only praised, okay, the service and the medical, which is, if I go to my own country and I go to the same clinics in my countries, I think the equipment and the treatments do not fall short of, uh, of the service that I would expect to get in my country. Shops has just set a standard delivery of care which is going to be difficult to match anywhere. It's not just the professional practice at shops but also the layout of all the clinics. I, I had a couple of friends who, who were working at shops before I came to shops and of course shops was a strong brand known in the dental practice, you know, so I didn't have to look too far for shops. Well, one thing about shops is um, you have virtually everything you require to do your work and that simply means it's almost like dentistry with ease. Shops has actually opened a lot of windows for me because precisely when I came here 15 or 14 February 88, I had a, to have a mediator between I and the Dr. Karumi because I could not even speak English. For me, shops is like the gold standard. That's the truth about it. Um, I look at shops and see how I want to practice all the time because for me it's almost like same thing as whatever you're going to get um, in the US or in the UK, you're getting the same standard of care here. I remember when I first came to Nigeria, I was working on Victoria Island, and uh, uh, I remember having a, uh, an enormous toothache, and uh, I'd have been quite happy for any dentist to come along and sort it out. However, somebody recommended shops to me, uh, so I took a, a boat across uh, Cowrie Creek to Milnerton Road in, uh, in, in Ikoi. I took a, a carder to Shubs. I was in a hurry to get there, so I wanted to get there as quickly as possible. And what I found there was uh, uh, an amazing practice with uh, very professional people uh, within a, a very caring atmosphere. Light telephoned me about a crisis. And of course, it was how I came to know more about shops. Uh, the crisis was that the building they were occupying at that point in time, the Koyi building, uh, I believe belonged to or, or, or it was rented to them by an agency of government. And uh, there was some threat that they were going to take it back, knock it down, and that sort of thing. And that was the circumstances in which I reconnected with uh, Light, eh? and of course with Body too. And uh, so I had to speak to the chap in government who seemed to be uh, uh, the real problem for them. Uh, to tell him that he really should reconsider that decision and uh, it was in that circumstance, if you like, that I came to even visit the Koi setup of uh, shops. The fact that they are expanding, that they are maintaining the same standard everywhere they have established the station 
uh, make me feel that they set in, they are really a leader in the field and they set in standards that others are well advised to copy. It's changed my perception of what a private dental clinic could be in Nigeria. Shops stands heads and shoulders above the other private clinics I have seen uh, in, in this country. I would say they should uh, try to maintain the high standard that they have set for themselves. I remember the first time I had to do something for jobs was in the US. I was out there and buddy wanted tiles and I was wondering what do you want these tiles for? He said no no eight millimeter tiles. I said why? I mean we have tiles in Nigeria. He said no. Well the rest is history. Those were quality tiles and part of what made his practice look good. And um, from there Chubbs has always dealt with quality, first class dental practices. It was pure panic, pure dread to go to see a dentist then. But, but they revolutionized the whole thing, painless, what I call painless um, visits to the dentist. He goes to your systems, does your teeth, and you go out smiling. And um, the quality right from the beginning to the end as you come in, the way you're received, the way the staff take you to your chair. I think the most memorable times were in Apapa, where the journey started. Incredible. You go there, you were like home, and he lived upstairs, and the practice was downstairs. So it was all family, friendly, smiles. When he's finished with your tooth, you go upstairs and gist. <laughs> Those were the great times. My conclusion from my own experience is that to me, they are the best dentists in the world. In the sense that you don't have to be frightened that you'll be going to a dentist tomorrow. You come comfortably knowing that you are coming to somebody who is very humane and understands pain. And not only do they try to manage it, they provide an environment that makes you comfortable. Even at the time they are treating you, they show film, uh, pictures, and so on, actively, so that your attention, to some extent, is diverted away from the pain while the dentist is doing his job. You know, just talking about the challenges that we have, you know, um, practicing here in Nigeria. Um, and I was explaining that I had a colleague in the UK I visited. And I was, he asked me how the practice was in Nigeria. And I told him the challenges, you know, that you need to have a borehole, you need to have two generators. And he couldn't really comprehend. Um, but later that afternoon, he called me up and said, you know, buddy, I understand what you're saying now because they cut his water supply for just about two hours. They were doing some work on the street, on, the, on, on, on his um, street, and um, his water supply was cut off for just two hours. So he called me up and said, I understand what you're saying now, you know. And I said, well, that's what we go through. Um, where you have the infra a very poor infrastructure, um, I was explaining to someone the other day that um, for the 30 years that we've been in existence, we have bought generators for 30 years. And I think it goes a lot to say that um, um, the government needs to do a lot more to provide just the basic things. If we've been using generators for 30 years, that is um, not a good testimony for the government. Um, and I remember, you know, I keep telling my wife, oh, don't worry, this is our last generator. This is our last generator. And then we end up buying more and more. Each of the clinic has two generators. There's six generators running, you know. We could do a lot more with, um, with the savings if we didn't have to uh, use generators, you know. So these are just some of the issues that we have. And then with the banking sector, 
uh, the interest rates are too exorbitant. I remember once we, our interest rate jack, was jacked up from 21% to 45% and we had to pay within a year. That was very difficult for us and I don't see how you know, we can sustain this in this country where in the medical field interest rates are above 25%. If the industry, the bank of industry is given single digits, there's no reason why we can't have medical loans, uh, medical bank or some financial institution that would recognize the peculiarity of medicine in uh, dentistry in Nigeria. It's time to do that. We're losing doctors, you know, to foreign countries, and it's not good for us. You know, imagine if a consultant leaves a teaching hospital, the postgraduate students, the undergraduate students all suffer, and the patients will suffer. At the end of the day, we need experienced doctors, but our doctors are leaving, and um, I just hope the government will be able to do something to stem this tide. A lot of people that I've introduced here, I introduced a German couple not long ago, and they felt that the standards here were much higher than what was in existence in Germany. Yes, it's as much as it is. I feel exceptionally proud about it, um, the achievement of shops over the years. And then it's not, what is more is that everything that Nigerians have tried to prove he has disproved. That means we're patient, we understand, we can grow gradually and maintain standards, and above all, integrity, quality of service. The expansion has been gradual, you know, and there was no need for, uh, for hurry. And that's why it has lasted for 30 years. Most Nigerian businesses would have crushed, and there's quite a lot of them in the same profession that I know that are still not around. Most of them have run off to Saudi Arabia and uh, other places because they, they are not patient enough to do the necessary to survive in such a harsh terrain like Nigeria and be competitive globally. The amount of personal investment he has made, I remember him at very early um, early in his practice that every year he went out to an international conference on dentistry to see what is the development in the industry as it were on a yearly basis and not, not only that he came back with what he thought was best and invested it here in Nigeria I've yet to see a Nigerian who has done what he has done he smiles with all the staff. I've never seen Bode shout at anybody. And then, uh, and so on and so forth. And he's been here every day, drives himself to work, sometimes drives himself to a papa, and then to Ikeja, and make sure. Another thing that he does, he keeps time, which is what a lot of Nigerians don't do. When I joined the Shubs family, I was at crossroads. I was trying to decide I mean, with what I'd seen of dentistry after I, from school, and after I'd finished school, I just, it just didn't look promising. It didn't look too promising. So I came here at Crossroads, not really having that many expectations, just, okay, let me just, let me just have this last chance with dentistry, and then I'll see where it takes me from there. But I mean, coming here has been a mind-blowing experience. Um, like I said, it, it, it didn't just change my perception of dentistry, it changed my perception of how I see life, you know, and so even in my decision making, in family life, in business, in, in everything I do, in my relationships, I just have a, I have a different view. I see a problem and I, I don't even see problems anymore, I see the solution. So that's how, that's what Shops has done for me and that's because I work in an environment and shops have been able to create a, an environment where we only see solutions. A patient comes to us and there's no limit to what we can do. 
you know all we see is what the best we can offer that patient and we're trained and you know it becomes a part of you you always want to give your best to that patient and you you get the recall the patient comes back and you see how much you've offered that patient and and that's where the satisfaction comes from Apapa was the um I guess the, the the first branch of shops, you know, and at the time, you know, you could you could tell straight away that they were head above the rest. Then Ikoi came on board, and I thought that oh, dentistry cannot be better than this, you know, and uh, and uh, because of the innovation of, of shops, you know, Ikoi took dentistry to another level. Now, Ikeja now came into the picture and honestly, it was like going from uh, driving a, a Toyota car to actually driving the Rolls Royce of, of dentistry, you know, because of, you know, the innovation and the, the input into, into the Ikeja practice actually, you know, made shops way above the rest in terms of clinical practice and in terms of training. So I would say shops is always, almost always up to date. So new tech, new methods of giving quality treatment or faster treatment. It's kind of opened my eyes to like an international standard of doing dentistry. So when you're doing a procedure and it's looking like it's going to be difficult or you're not sure what to do, Dr. Karen will always tell you to pray. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit listens, pray. Yeah, that, that's always funny. I'll never forget that. I'd like to say that uh, uh, I had retained my London dentist of over 30 years when I returned to Lagos on retirement from my service to the Commonwealth. But uh, when, about 14 years ago, I needed an emergency treatment to my teeth and he couldn't wait until my next visit to London, a friend introduced me to Dr. Ode Karumwe's dental clinic. And I went there and I was so impressed by the condition of the clinic and more importantly, by the expertise and uh, uh, meticulous attention showed by Dr. Karunwe, that my wife and I have retained, um, we abandoned our London dentists and uh, have remained uh, the clients of Shops Dental Clinic ever since. My original perception of dentistry is that it's a very painful exercise to go to a dentist, but not so in the case of Shops. The founder of Shop was my student. And like many of my students, it's a good friend of mine. But the Shops Dental Clinic in Ekoi is not only located in a leafy area or the most leafy area of Nigeria. The clinic itself, inside, when you come in, you find it is very leafy. But that's not the only thing. Before you enter, you have vessel to sanitize your hands. And then you come inside. All the staff, all the staff behave in the most civilized way you can ever think of. To everybody. Because they never ask you who you are. We are a patient and our business is to make sure that every patient is happy. There's a need for supplies, providers of dental items, dental materials, dental instruments and dental solutions were developed to fill in that gap. But in the process of actually providing these items, they realised there was also a training gap and so a few years back they decided that perhaps they needed to launch a training and it started with implants. Dental Solutions felt that they needed to be a state-of-the-art environment to provide this training and it wasn't enough to just have a room somewhere anywhere in Lagos. So Dr. Karawi or Shubb's Dental Clinic 
decided to create a space for, for that. And so we find that in the Kecha clinic where the upstairs has been completely converted into a training facility. We have a seminar room that holds about 30 to 50 delegates seated in seminar style fashion with a plasma screen where we could run video clips or live demonstrations running from the clinic and various other rooms within that first floor. We also have a demonstrative room where there are phantom heads where clinicians can now do various types of hands-on training and which will perfect the standards um, of quality work that Shubs is known for. Um, so these phantom heads rooms are basically mannequin heads with jaws that they can practice certain types of procedures like placing composites, doing various things on ortho, doing various things on you know different types of smile designs. So it's a fantastic facility for any type of clinician to come in and, and really perfect their clinical treatment. I think we both came up with that name. And now what happened was um, years before, I think about two, three years before we started the, started clinic. the clinic, a friend of ours um, who was working with the, at the registry, yes. the company's registry, came to us and said, um, look, you guys, don't you want to register a company? And we said, register a company? Okay. Well, she said to us, I'll take this, yeah. she said to us, I'm on my way to Abuja right now. Okay. And, and um, I can register your company. company. What, do you have a name? You mm. said you wanted to write, what's the name? And she yeah. was like, in two minutes, I want the name I now, the name. just give me the name. So we thought about a name, and our first son's middle name is Musha Balaji. And we decided to call to it's just coin call it, it, uh, it's, it's Shoba for short. Yes. Shoba for short. So yeah, it's like just right. spell it in a, in a uh, confused way, just to confuse yeah. the spelling a bit. Yeah. So we just twisted it and just said S C A G B B S. That's it. Just, so it there's nothing to it, really. Yeah. <laughs> I actually decided in about five minutes. Five minutes, so. you know. Yeah, so that also happened. Mm.